Hi everyone, I'm Jim and welcome to the review of Made for War, the fourth studio record by the band E-Town Concrete. Today we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of the record, so I had to go back and see if it still holds up or not. Last year I reviewed their previous album, The Renaissance, so go check that video out. That's where I talk about how I found this band, which I actually don't quite remember when that happened. Must have been years, years ago, many, many years. I must say that since I first heard this band, I've stumbled upon their music, I've been a massive fan because of the melodies, the bass lines, the drumming, the vocals, it all slaps. This one, Made For War, well this was the last album before the band broke up and then later they came back in 2012 with a new EP and later they would play like one show a year to celebrate their existence basically and this year they probably planning on releasing a new EP or a new album because I've heard some new singles from them, they sound great, so I'm happy that this band is still alive and well. As you can see here we have 10 songs and one bonus track which is a cover of a body count song. The lineup is Anthony on the vocals, Eric on the bass, David on the guitar and Theodore on the drums. So yeah, classic lineup. I feel like this is the same lineup that played on the previous two albums. When it comes to the production, it was handled by Dan Kornov who also did some albums for Breaking Benjamin later. I feel he even made a Motionless in White album, you know, he produced one. The production is tight, it's clean but heavy, I love the sound of the guitars, the punchiness of the drums, the bass lines which are audible and how the vocals are mixed, it all works well. I love the sound of this album. Message is diverse, the songs are mostly about society, politics, humanity, stuff like that, very real table, especially songs like A Setup and All That You Have Is Still Not Enough, those two go really hard lyrically and they do make me sad, they're basically about capitalism and how people are being used by the government, how life is tough when you're poor, and there are also some songs about personal struggles, you know, through addictions, but also through loneliness, depression, stuff like that, so all of that is here. When it comes to the structure of these songs, it's basic, standard intro, verse, because chorus, verse, because chorus, bridge, chorus, outro, sometimes it's slightly different where they skip the third chorus and go straight to the outro or add another breakdown section, it depends on the song. The music genre on this record is a mix between nu metal and hardcore, while it doesn't have as much rapping as the previous album, it still has those very emotional screams and singing style. And the music, yeah, it also sounds like a mix between hardcore and nu metal because of the guitar riffs, how punchy, catchy they are, the grooves, the drumming, how the bassist is very prominent and you can hear his playing. So yeah, a perfect blend of nu and hardcore stuff. When it comes to the musicianship on this record, it's superb. The drummer is on fire. His groove, his style, the precision of his playing is just top notch. I love the drumming on this record. The bass lines are audible, they are juicy, the bass is fantastic as well. The guitar riffs, exquisite, I love them, they sound very, very unique. I love the guitarist playing on this record. It kinda makes me sad that this band has only four studio records because the guitar riffs truly make this band sound special, at least to me. And last but not least we've got the vocals, the vocals by Anthony and he has this one of a kind voice where his singing is very beautiful and emotional and his screaming, he has that bark and yelling noise, it just sounds phenomenal to me, like you cannot mistake him for any other vocalist, it's very emotional as well what he's screaming about, you know, you feel all of those emotions, so yeah, the vocals are fantastic on this record as well. Now. Let's talk about the individual songs on the album. The record opens up with Pariah. This one, wow, it's so depressive and heavy at the same time. It's probably the heaviest opening on their entire discography because on the previous record we had Mandibles or however you pronounce that and that song was very rap metalish sounding, you know. It had that rap vibe to no 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 over over no 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 no. And this one Pariah 
has no rapping, just has screaming, growling, like, he's so angry, he's so angry at the state of the world basically. This song is about how America would start wars for profit. It doesn't have to be America, it's just about how basically you start a war to profit of misery of others, you know, to sell guns, stuff like that. And this one is just heavy. It's so goddamn heavy. It can also be interpreted as a song that is about basically how religion starts wars over and over again and people just suffer everywhere because of it. A heavy way to start the record for sure. This one has it all, amazing vocals, the guitar riffs are just brutal, same with the drumming, it's a great opener, that's for sure, 10 out of 10. Next song, Plowshares and Swords, this one, wow, I just love it, it's much more simpler in its structure than the previous song, but <laughs> the guitar riffs just bang so hard, you know, the grooves are impeccable, the vocal is just so angry, his shouting, screaming, yelling, it's all on point. The lyrics are again about the rich exploiting the poor for money. It has this metaphor of a king basically sending his people to their doom, to their death, so he can profit of their misery. It sounds like that lyrically and the song is, yeah, it's hard as well. While it's not as technical as Pariah, it's still so much fun. 10 out of 10. Wide Awake this one brings more of a vibe similar to the previous record, you know, more nu metalish, less so in your face heaviness, but more like, you know, groovy. And I love the vibes of this one. The lyrics are quite interesting. They're about mass media, how they control what you think, you know, basically. They lie to you, they say you one thing and the other thing is happening. So I do enjoy the bridge here the most. And the bass line so it's a great song the guitar riffs are catchy and simple but effective this is not as good as the previous two songs but i still dig it a lot nine out of ten the distance this one is my least favorite song on the record because of the music the music is very gloomy doomy it kind of sounds like black metal song at the end you know the guitar riffs have that black metalish flavor to them but this is still a crossover between nu metal and hardcore but they've infused it with so much black metal energy that i just cannot stand it that much because of that i don't like black metal i just wanted to say but the lyrics on this song and the vocals wow just wow this one is about the distance between the very rich people and the very poor ones and how a poor person goes to hospital or to the doctor you know because, because they need help and a rich person can go eh, because of their vanity or some stuff that's a line in this song and i love the lyrics they're very irritable they're about current world situation even if the record came out in 2004 it's still relevant lyrically at least and musically to me you know so yeah the distance i'm not going to skip it as i'm listening to the album but on its own it's not that interesting every other song on the record is better than this one seven out of ten do you know what it's like now this is a ballad type of a banger on the previous record we had more songs like this here well this is the only one i love the vocals the lyrics are basically about again poor people getting screwed over by the rich, how basically they are being denied their rights, you know, to condoms, to same-sex marriage, stuff like that. It's an interesting song. I love the chorus here. Do you know what it's like to pray? Do you know what it's like? But my favorite part of the track is the bridge with a very cool and slow guitar solo. It has that jazzy vibe to it. It's fun, jazzy, I mean, blues as well, you know, jazz, blues, stuff like that. It's a great song, not the best on the record, but I still like it a lot. 8 out of 10. Blood. This one is an improvement over the previous two songs. While it's still not perfect, it has that hardcore edginess to it, the heavy guitar riffs. I love the melodies on this song. They remind me of old school 90s nu metal. Love the vocals here. While this is not a technical or, you know, a masterpiece by any means, it's a great song. So yeah, 9 out of 10. The lyrics here in Blood were actually about someone who committed some atrocity and you're not going to forgive them for something. Next track is called A Setup and this is my second favorite song from this band period. The lyrics are so relatable and so heavy, same as the music. The lyrics are basically about a guy called Johnny 
who basically cannot go to university, you know, to continue his studies because he cannot afford them. So he lands a job, but only because he has a good uncle, but then he loses the job because they replace him with a worker that, you know, will work the same, but for much, much less wage ba wages, basically. And then, you know, he doesn't have any money to feed his family. So he decides to, you know, steal things from the vocalist of this band. So it's an interesting story. It's sad as hell. And the lyrics are true because, you know, people are poor. And when you are poor, you are desperate to do things that you wouldn't do if you were not poor. So it's a sad song, but it will destroy you mentally and physically because of how heavy it is. The melodies go hard. The verses, great, great atmosphere. The chorus slaps. What I love about it is after the first chorus, the line from the chorus, they set you up to knock you down, will come back as a breakdown in the middle of the song with just 0, 0, 0 played on the guitar. That's just so effective, you know. And after that, we get a bridge section and the chorus comes up. Not the breakdownish chorus, but the standard chorus. And after the standard chorus, we get the breakdown once again. So yeah, beautiful song on all fronts, you know, musically and lyrically. This is one of the better songs from this band for sure. It can tear you up, you know, I've cried while listening to this one because it's so, it's so sad. 12 out of 10. What can I do? This one is probably the most new metalish song on the record. It has a very kind of positive sounding instrumental work in a sense that it's soothing, you know. This song is basically about addictions you know and maybe trying to be better that's what at least what i think it's about i love the chorus because anthony is singing here and he's a beautiful singing voice so it goes hard the chorus very new metalish the verses slap i love this song with all of my heart this is my third favorite song on this record go check it out you won't be disappointed 11 out of 10 made for war the title song this is my fourth favorite one here I love the vocals here, the guitar riffs, very emotional. Same with the drumming and the bass lines. This is the only song on the entire record which sounds exactly like the previous album, The Renaissance, you know, because it has so much rapping in it in the verses. I love it with all of my heart. 11 out of 10. I forgot to tell you what the lyrics were about. They're basically about you struggling through life and never giving up, you know, because you are made for war. I need, I need to survive everything, every atrocity to to move on, you know, so that's the point. And the final song, All That You Have Is Still Not Enough. This is my favorite E-Town Concrete track, period. The vocals, emotional, gut-wrenching, the guitar riffs, melodic but heavy at the same time, iconic sounds, the bass lines, juicy, the drumming, stellar. Like, this is a perfect song. Lyrically, this song is about life beating you up. And you're just, you don't know if you're going, you know, to hold on, if you're going to survive. You're trying, but it's never enough. And I must say that this song relates to me a lot. When I first heard it all those years ago, I don't remember exactly when, I know that I've cried. And even now, before I've started recording this review, I've listened to the entire record, of course. And it made me tear up, you know, because it's a sad song. I love the singing and the chorus, the pre-chorus, the heavy verses, you know, vocally, the screaming, the growling. I appreciate these guys for writing and recording this song because it means a lot to me. So this is how it feels and it doesn't feel so good To know you couldn't give enough after giving all you could it's been raining for so long, it's like the sun will never shine I've been losing for so long, I think I fell too far behind Yeah, so that's the chorus and yeah, it's something, it's something else 12 out of 10 And the bonus track, the body count cover, There Goes the Neighborhood like, everyone calls this a bonus track, but I feel like every single copy of this record has this song anyways. So yeah, this one is better to me than the original song. 
because it has better production, better vocals. I'm not trying to shit on Ice-T, Ice-T is great, I love Ice-T, but this one just has ferocity to it, you know, the rapping, the screaming, the shouting, doom, 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 doom. there goes the neighborhood, we're black. So yeah, great stuff, I love this cover with all of my heart. Yeah, it's a perfect cover, you know, it's done with taste and respect for the original artist. 10 out of 10. To sum it all up, the consistency is stable and the flow is fitting. Replayability, yeah, it's a masterpiece. I love this record from beginning to the end. Sure, the distance is the weakest song, but I still like it. It's a good track. Everything else slaps. The highlights here are all that you have is still not enough. A setup, what can I do? Made for war, pariah and plowshares and swords. Yeah, this is fantastic stuff. I am not sure which album from E-Town Concrete is my favorite because when I want something to, you know, sing along to and have more fun and more energy, then I'm going to listen to the Renaissance. But if I want something more introspective, something to think about because the lyrics are so wise, then I choose this one, Made for War. And you can always sing along to some of the songs like A Setup, What Can I Do and All That You Have Still Not Enough. You can sing along to those, the rest not, not so much. but. I still love everything here. I feel like this entire band was always underrated and underappreciated for what they've done because they have not released a bad album. They've always released banger albums. Even the first one, Time to Shine, the second one, the second coming are fantastic. But I still prefer the those two, you know, Made for War and the Renaissance for some reason. Probably because they have more singing, you know, and more emotions. But the first two are also great and have some banger tracks. Hopefully I will be able to review them someday as well for you. So thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, celebrate the university by spinning this record today, it deserves your love and attention. Check out my lyric video to the song A Setup, which I will post probably soon, like this month on this channel. And yeah, that's it. If you want support me by checking out my Patreon or joining the YouTube membership so I can make more videos like this. That's all. Bye.